government has decided to merge 10 public sector banks into four entities. Punjab National Bank, Oriental Bank of Commerce and United Bank will be merged to form the second largest public sector bank. Now, Kandra Bank and Syndicate Bank will be merged to form the country's fourth largest PSU bank. The other groupings will be a merger between Union Bank, Andhra Bank and Cooperation Bank and a merger between Indian Bank and Allahabad Bank. This will become... Ladies and gentlemen, we often hear the news of various banks being merged. It is like, this bank is merging with that bank and so on and so forth. It actually leaves food for thought in my head like. What is the benefit of this merger? If the government has thought of this, shall we make profits only? Or is it simply like reducing the total number of banks available in the economy, and many more like this? To find answers of these questions. I went through a lot of resources and recommendations of various committees, conducted over a period of time. So let's begin understanding the darker and the brighter sides of banking merger and acquisition, a type organizational restructuring. Firstly, talking about the brighter sides. A bank merger will bring the hold of all the branches and assets of the other bank. The merging bank will scale up quickly and gain a large number of new customers instantly. Simultaneously, the new bank will now have a presence in the areas where it was not. I agree, this is also possible by doing our own. But, believe me, acquiring a smaller bank that offers a unique revenue model or financial product is sometimes easier than building that business unit from scratch. Secondly, when it comes to lending and investments, the acquisition gives your bank more capital to work. Now, the new bank will be in a better position to lend more people and earn more. Your geographical presence will also be much more wide-reaching, and with more product offerings than before. Cost-wise, if you would look into their functioning. It is quite possible that all the bank being merged now, were present in the same area with different names. As we know, the set of customer segment is same, and the banks are incurring double operational cost, double investment, double efforts and double of everything except the revenue and profit. Now, they will all the money being spent for work redundancy. Quite possible, that new cost will be one-fourth of the previous cumulative cost. As the bank is now bigger and has more money, hence, it has more viability to lend more people and diversify the investment in a broader array. This diversified investment will not only curb down the risk eventually, but it will also add up to your fixed revenue streams. Bank mergers and acquisitions empower your business to fill product or technology gaps. And, from a technology perspective, being acquired by a larger bank might allow your institution to upgrade its technology platform significantly. It also provides a broader geographic footprint in which to operate. That way, you achieve your growth goals quicker. The culmination of these factors, like technological advancement, work efficiency, diversified investment and reduced risks, you'll now incur lesser cost, and will generate more money from the market. This will not only enable you to give foreign banks a tough competition, but will make them competent enough to get an edge over them. As any other thing in the universe, this also has a darker side. Like, the unrecovered loans. So-called bad debts, non-performing assets will also be adjusted in the balance sheet of the doing well bank. Like a parasite, the merged bank will absorb the earnings and gains of the merging bank. The transfer of assets and holding during the merger will attract some cost also. This cost will in the form of cost for issuing new debit cards and credit cards. Money will be incurred for issuing new checkbooks and passbooks. Cost will also to be borne for issuing new account numbers and subsequently the IF codes. While undergoing a merger and acquisition event at your bank, it's critical to pay attention to the impact it has on your customers. These customers are going to be involved for switching their account process into saving and investments. They have to collect new passbooks and checkbooks. 
their investment SIPs and loan auto debit are to be switched. In fact, customers often respond very emotionally to a bank acquisition. And once the merger or acquisition is fully underway, it leaves the impact on the customers at every stage, which negatively affects the profitability of the business down the road. Talking about the shareholders, the ownership holders of the banks, to find the investment vulnerable. The swap rate of shares isn't decided, and after effects are always uncertain. In this situation, they prefer redeeming or switching to other investments or shares rather than holding the shares. As it makes no point to stay, with increased risk and reduced return. My fellow friends, these are the major pros and cons of a banking merger or acquisition. If you have any other point, you can please mention in the comment section below. For any feedback and topic inclusion, please write in the comment section. Please like and share the video to learn more topics. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel Autodidact to stay updated. Till then, stay healthy and happy. All the best.